So if I was going about building my wealth today, if I'm a young man and I want to be a first generation cash flow millionaire and I'm going on social media, I'd be so confused. There's so many different characters out there. There's so many quote unquote gurus out there showing the flash, showing the cash, showing everything else. Well, let's discover the truth about how to build wealth, how to build money and prosperity from the wisest and richest king who lived, King Solomon, in this episode of the Seb Vera Squad starting in three, two, one, let's go. What's cracking everybody? Money smart guy, Matt Zapala here. Hey, Lynn Teal from Dallas, Texas. And we're on for another episode here of a proverb a week for the next 31 weeks. We're now in Proverbs chapter 14. We're in the 14th week of us doing this, unpacking a proverb every day. But if you feel that we're showing value, you're getting something from these videos, please consider liking this video. If you watch a couple of our videos and you have not yet subscribed to our YouTube channel, but it's helping you on somehow, some way, please consider subscribing. Our journey is gets 150,000 subs because we've got aspirations. That's the next milestone because we've got aspirations to get to 250,000 subs because there's a rumor out there that we might be doing a live event or some form of group coaching or online coaching, but we need to get to 150,000 subs for us to even think about considering it and adding it already to our busy schedule. All right, so let's jump into it. So what's the truth behind the millionaire behaviors, the millionaire actions and habits to not only become a first generation cash flow millionaire, but make sure that money lasts. So here's some behaviors in action. I'll be going one each, and there's over 35 different verses of behaviors, of actions, of those that actually want to build well. Okay, number one, building your home, both financial and spiritual. I, I've kind of drew this little picture, forgive my drawing, but if you're building a home, a castle made out of brick, you want to build it on a foundation. You want to build your wealth on it. You want to build your family upon it. It's built on a foundation. So number one, build your home. What does it say here about how a woman builds her home? In uh, chapter 14, verse one, it reads like this. The wise woman builds her house, but with her own hands, the foolish one tears her down. Oftentimes I see my friends are building a house, whether they're building their finances or actually building their home home. And they, de they defer too much. They defer, somebody else is going to take care of it. Somebody else is going to take care of it. Listen, there's nobody that cares more about building your home than yourself. Don't delegate that. And so the next one is about actions. So we talked about the behavior of building your home financially and spiritually and some things that you cannot delegate. You got to take care of it yourself. So actions, actions is defined as doing something to achieve goals. Again, doing something to achieve goals. So one behavior was building your home. What about an action? He wants for you to go about speaking, but anybody can speak, anybody can talk, anybody can sing, anybody can rap, anybody can post, anybody can blog, anybody can do a video, but how does he want you to go about walking throughout your life and how does he want you speaking? Let's read here chapter 14, verse two and three. It reads like this. Whoever fears the Lord walks uprightly, but those who despise him are devious in their ways. A fool's mouth lashes out with pride, but the lips of the wise protect them. Listen, we're living in an era where a lot of people are offended. We're living in an era where a lot of people are saying, hey, that's not politically correct, et cetera, et cetera. What should be your guide though? Your guide should be walking in the fear of the Lord because you're necessarily not here to please man or woman because we're all emotional, we're all human beings. If we're here to please God, and that is your mission to please God and to represent God and to be an ambassador of God, you want to make sure you fear God, you please God, and you speak not with pride, but with godly wisdom. It says here that a fool's mouth lashes out with pride. Pride causes you to speak and erupt and emote. How many people are led with their emotions and, oh man, I regret what I said. And it doesn't take a fool that to see who hasn't seen the Will Smith smack, to see what happened to Chris Rock, to see what ha happened to Jada Pinkett Smith. We all saw that in the news. People immediately had an emotional reaction to what Will Smith did, had an emotional reaction to feeling that way towards Chris Rock, their emotional reaction to what Jada Pickett Smith reacted or didn't react. Everybody had an emotional reaction. However, the wise were careful about the words that came out of their mouth. Whatever they posted, whatever they said, whatever they tweeted, it should be led with not your initial emotion, which a lot of people do. But God wants you to lead with the lips of the wise. So you gotta ask yourself, do I want to lead with pride or do I want to lead with the lips of the wise. Let's go back to behaviors. Honesty versus lies. Verse five, it reads like this. An honest witness does not deceive, but a false witness pours out lies. What do you wanna be? Even when you know somebody is gonna go down for this, what happens when you tell a lie? The worst part about telling a lie is you have to tell another lie to cover the first lie and tell another lie to cover the second lie to cover the first lie. How many movies have you seen? How many things have you experienced in life where somebody was protecting a lie and eventually it had to come out, otherwise more people would get hurt. Let's go to actions now. Investing time, money, and work. Verse four, because people want wealth, right? Well, how do we invest time? How do you invest money? In verse four, it reads like this. When there are no oxen, the manger is empty. The manger is basically the farm where they stored all the animals. 
but from the strength of an ox come abundant harvests. In other words, you got to invest in business. In that, that time, the, talking about oxen are the, the tractors. The oxen are the work animals that actually made the farm. So therefore, the farmer has something to grow, has something to sell at the marketplace. If you got nothing working for you, if you invested in nothing, then you cannot expect money. You got to get to work. Okay, third behavior. What you are, you will find. How many times you're researching something, you're Googling something, researching, should I do this, should I do that? Should I do this, should I do that? Well, what does King Solomon say here about what you will find? Verse six, it reads like this. The mocker seeks wisdom, but finds none. But knowledge comes easily to the discerning. I see so many people get involved in business. They go to friends, they go to family members, they go to people out in the marketplace. They go out on social media to promote it. And based on what other people say, it determines whether or not they should do this or not. Instead of adjusting, instead of making uh, some slight tweaks to the product or service offering or in the marketing uh, uh, headlines or whatever the case may be, it just completely talks them out of pursuing wealth, of pursuing business, of pursuing their dreams and their goals, simply because they went out there seeking approval versus saying, if I'm gonna go out to the marketplace, how do I get better? Because I know my product or service is gonna make somebody's life better, easier, through based on my innovation or my assistance and help. What can you do out there? But people that are saying, you know what? I don't know, man. A fool that says, I'm gonna go out there, I'm gonna ask for permission, or I'm gonna go out there and talk my way out of a decision versus talking my way deeper into a decision. Again, the choice is yours. So let's go to number three on actions. Three behaviors, third action. How wisdom helps you find your way. Let's go to verse eight, it reads like this. The wisdom of the prudent is to give thought to their ways, but the folly of fools is deception. Again, back to thoughts. Now become to actions. Is this the right move? So people act right away. You know, listen, this is probably going to be a very uh, difficult truth for a lot of people to swallow. I've had a lot of conversations with people because their people are activists. They're activists, right? And one of the activists' actions is to protest. It's to take their whole day, two days, one week, one month, to sit down, picket, and protest. You know what will really help create change? Is you making a lot of money you getting voted into office, you being the policymaker, there you go. That's how you make change. What are your thoughts? Put it in the comment section below. So if you wanna put this affirmation in your life, put it in the comment section below. I am following wisdom to find my way. I am following wisdom to find my way. Put it in the comment section below. Let's go back to behavior. Behavior number four, stay away from fools. Do you feel offended? What does King Solomon say here? Uh, Proverbs chapter 14, verse seven, it reads like this. It says, stay away from a fool, for you will not find knowledge on their lips. Stay away from them, they're not guiding you in the right way. What about the fourth action? Done with the fight? You're done with the fight? I'm reminded of a video of Deion Sanders coaching his team. Let's check this out. He's coaching his team. These guys are fighting. He got pissed off at each other, rightfully so. He let him duke it out. He didn't separate him, he let him duke it out. But at the end, he said what? Shake it up. By the way, this is biblical, let's check this out. Verse nine, it reads like this. Fools mock and make it amends for sin, but goodwill is found among the upright. There's a lot of people say, well, if he cross you, he cross you. That can't be your boy. What did Coach Deion Sanders say? Listen, shake it up, shake it up. You're still on the same team. You may have gotten mad at each other. It doesn't mean you can't shake it up and still fight for the same journey. You might be on opposite sides of the ball right now in practice. When we go out there in the game, on Saturday afternoons, guess what we're fighting for? We're fighting for the same team. So, shake it up. So behavior, number five, house versus the tent. Do you want to build a house or do you want to build a tent? Obviously, many of you say a house, but what does King Solomon say about those that build a house because those that actually build a tent, which wins? Verse 11, it reads like this. Now the house of the wicked, the house of the wicked will be destroyed, but the tent of the upright will flourish. God says, I don't care where you're at right now. All I care about is if you're upright. I don't care if you're in the house. I don't care if you're in a tent. But if you're good with me, if you're here to honor and serve God and to serve his people, I'm with you and will make you upright and he will make you flourish. So let's go to action number five. Faith or no faith in your ways. What do you have? Some people do just to do, but do you have faith behind your steps? Do you have purpose behind your steps? Let's read what it says here in 14. The faithless will be fully repaid for their ways, and the good rewarded for theirs. So what step are you taking? Many times as an entrepreneur, as an investor, cer certain business plans you got going on, tucking money away, there's a faith behind it. 
or are you doing it just to do it? Are you doing it and just going through the motions? Or because you're just going through the motions, you're really not behind it. Your heart's not really behind it, so therefore it doesn't manifest it in flesh. It doesn't become blessed. But if there's faithfulness and say, hey, Lord, I know this is your money. I'm tucking this away. I know this is a faith step. This is where you led me to. You're not going to bring me to this area. You're not going to bring me to this step unless you want me to do something about it. And in that moment, wisdom kicks in, your counsel kicks in, and guess what? God will bless your ways. Behavior number six, prudence, prudence, prudence. Again, prudence, a couple definitions here. Govern and discipline oneself. How to govern and discipline oneself. I wrote here last week, being prudent means acting with and showing care, thought for the future. Your behaviors today, are they just for the now or are they for the long game? Sadly, with all the things that you see on the internet, a lot of people are now, 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 now. That's where a lot of people get caught up. What did King Solomon say about this? There's a few verses here. Let's go to 15 through 16 and then jump to 18. They read like this. The simple believe anything, but the prudent give thought to their steps. The wise fear the Lord and shun evil, but a fool is hot-headed and yet feels secure. Let's jump to 18. The simple inherit folly but the prudent are crowned with knowledge you see there's a lot of benefits here the king psalm is talking about being prudent having thoughtful care for the future which should lead you to your actions here number six what eventually happens to those that plot evil versus those that plot good because sometimes people they're plot man they uh, get some thoughts and you never know what happens but god will eventually reveal those that plan evil versus good Verse 19, it reads like this. Evildoers will bow down in the presence of the good and the wicked at the gates of the righteous. Sometimes you don't think that your endeavor, saving for your financial future, saving for your kid's college, buying that life insurance, creating that will, creating that trust, you don't think that those endeavors, being prudent with your finances, putting off a short-term purchase, so therefore you can invest and save for the future. Pretty soon, those things start to compound. And next thing you know, people say, oh man, you know what? We always believe in you, we always knew you can do it. We always knew you could knock it out the park. Can I borrow some? Can I get in this camp now? What are you talking about? Those things happen for those that eventually plan for good or plan for evil. The Lord will take care of them for you on your behalf. In the meantime, you do your thing. Behavior number seven is how to react when life hits you, and life will hit you. For example, in this journey, you're going through life, your journey of financial freedom, prosperity, success, and wealth, becoming a kingdom builder, having contribution, charity, and philanthropy. On one side of the road, there's morality. On the opposite side, right next to it, is also the path of immorality. And these red lines indicate distractions that may come your way. Emergencies, death, divorce, Bad decisions, distractions, of course, we all, we all have made them. But when you seek out wisdom, and we seek out how God wants you to handle things, King Solomon says, this is how to react when life hits you. Verse 32 reads like this, when calamity comes, the wicked are brought down. But even in death, the righteous seek refuge in God. That's right. Seek refuge in God. Seek prayer with God. Seek counsel from God and godly men and godly women in your life. That's why it's so important to have the right godly counsel around you. And by the way, what I've discovered too as well, one of the worst places for you to be in when you're going through calamity or when life hits you is this place called isolation. It's one of the worst places to find yourself in. Why? Because that's where the devil wants you, isolated away from everybody, away from wisdom, away from godly people away from godly counsel, and guess what the enemy does when you're alone in the corner? He beats you up with all of his experience. So think about this. Even in death, the righteous seek refuge in God. Last couple actions here. Number seven, only thing to fear. Speaking of about fearing God, verse 26 and 27, it reads like this. Whoever fears the Lord has a secure fortress, and for their children it will be a refuge. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life, turning a person from the snares of death. Again, so that foundation that you are building, is it the fear of God? Is it the honoring of God? Is it the reverence of God? Is it? You're building wealth. Is it based on the foundation of God and how are you going to use it for His glory to manifest and build His kingdom? Is it? Which leads you to number eight. 
A king is a king with this. Okay, king, you say you're a king? You say you're a queen? Well, this is what you will have. King is a king, a queen is a queen with this. Verse 28, it reads like this. A large population is a king's glory, but without subjects, a prince is ruined. See, oftentimes people run their family, they run their business, they run their kingdom the wrong way. And next thing everybody takes off. I'm dealing with a manager right now. He talks down to his people. He talks to them like he owns them. And guess what? I get the messages. I don't want to be in this guy's office. I don't want to work with this person. Blah, 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 blah. All the different things are happening. Why? Because the king is not acting like a king at all. The king is there to serve his people. Not to demand and control and put a finger and put a thumb on their forehead. So if you want to be a God kind of leader, think about the type of king you want to be. Otherwise, the opposite there is true. If you are serving your people, if you're giving opportunities for the people around you, if you're using your money in your business to bless others, guess what? You're going to have a population around you because God's going to say, okay, you're, you're taking care of my people. You're taking care of my fruits. You're taking care of my, uh, my, uh, uh, my, my finances. Boom. There's your population. I want you to serve this many people. So that is an indication. That is a fruit that you will bear as an entrepreneur, as an investor, as a father, as a mother, as a child growing up in his world, not straying from the word. A lot of these things. By, by the way, I encourage you. There's 35 other verses within inside Proverbs chapter 14. And these are some of my top 15 of this episode. I encourage you to not just allow me to read Proverbs 14 for you, but there's so many things within inside Proverbs 14 that you will take away from. And I hope that you do put your best ones in the comment section below. So that being said, watch these two videos right here as we unpack an episode every week for the next 31 weeks. It's the Wealth and Wisdom series here on the Seven Fear Squad YouTube channel where we take a proverb a week, we, bre we break it down, we unpack it for us to see how King Solomon, who's regarded and known as the richest and wisest king who ever lived. That being said, guys, if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click like, hit subscribe, and consider hitting notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. That being said, from Dallas, Texas, I'm your money smart guy, and until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today. God bless you guys. Bye-bye. Thank <laughs> you.